right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. A little bit chilly, San Diego. You can hear I even got a cold. Who knew you get colds in San Diego, but you can. And I am joined today by Leslie Cooster, who is, can you believe this, is in on an island in Paris, Greece. How are you doing, Leslie? I'm doing pretty good here in Paris, Greece. Where it's so beautiful here. I'm sure. I'm so jealous. We could just spend the whole interview talking about, uh, you could just show us your holiday snaps. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, we could, right? <laughs> in the food especially. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, Leslie uh, shows uh, shows people how she created uh, a multi a multiple seven figure online business and how women also, if, whether you're 40, 50 or over 60, it's never too late to change your life. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, how women entrepreneurs can create financial wealth and a life of freedom that serves them. But first, Leslie, let's talk. Uh, let's just touch a little bit on your own journey, because this is very personal to you, right? Because you have done this yourself. So you're not sort of saying to people, oh, here, let me show you how to do this. But you've never done it. You at 55 mm -hmm. completely changed your finance, changed your business and your whole financial uh, situation. Yeah, and that that's exactly true. Uh, I, I've been an entrepreneur for a really long time, like uh, more than 30 years, but I was not really a financially successful entrepreneur all those years. And, and I think that is quite typical, actually, especially with women entrepreneurs, where they maybe don't even get over the six-figure mark. And in fact, the statistic is that only 10% of women entrepreneurs do over six figures in their business. So I, I, I want to change that. And but that was me. I, I was way below the six figure mark. And I had a business. Um, it was called Back from Bali, still is called Back from Bali. I, I import women's clothing from Bali, Indonesia. And I sell primarily in e-commerce on Amazon and on my own website. And I just got to a point in my early 50s where I felt so incredibly disappointed in where I was uh, in, in, in my work life, in, in my options, in, in the level of freedom that I would be able to have because I had some very uh, limited mindsets when it came to working and success. And the mindset went something like this, that I will lose my freedom if I work too hard. I will lose mm. my freedom to be able to do what I wanna do if I just focus on money and success. And I realized that that was a limiting belief and it was something that I carried around for a long time. And I think a lot of women do carry that around as well. And I made a very conscious decision that I don't wanna be that person any longer. And I really wanna step into making more money. And, and honestly, that was the secret. I had to become honest about what I wanted. And right. in that moment, I decided I was going to make my business successful and make money. And I, and I swore to myself, I am not waking up on my next birthday earning the same amount I was earning that year. And I did it. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. It's a couple of things I just want to pick up on there, because one of the key things that you just mentioned there was about these limiting beliefs um, that actually add up to a fear of success in many ways. And people always think it's a fear of failure that that holds people back. But often it's a fear of success, because to your point is success. Oh, I may have to work hard. Or I may have to do this. And and we're we're great. I mean, that, that's your women, men. We're all great at this idea of just uh, uh, like projecting out to the future and coming up with all these reasons not to do something uh, because it's going to impact our life. So then we're misaligned. We want this, but we're not prepared to make the changes. Yeah, I love that you just said that. And that is so true. I, I agree with you. I don't think it's a fear of failure. I think it's a fear of success. What happens to a woman? Let me ask you this. What For the women listening, Mary, yeah. 
What happens when you don't need your relationship anymore financially? Ooh, right? What happens in your family when, when you all of a sudden earn so much more than your mother did or your father did or you know whoever did? What happens to your friendships when you start you know, having a, a six, seven, eight figure business and you're not perceived as the person you once were? And this, I so agree with you, is what scares people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you touched on a lot there, but absolutely, I, I think it is about the changing in relationship dynamics, the changing in the people around you, all of those things. But at the end of the day, you, uh, to your point, though, you have to be authentic and be honest in what you actually really want. And if it is, in, in your case, if it is more money, that's great. Go for it. Embrace it you know, don't apologize for it. But I think that's the first step, as you said, is admitting to yourself what it is you really, really want. Oh, God, I love that. Um, I, I spent the, I spent actually uh, 2020 writing a book, and the book is called Money and Freedom. And it talks about seven keys to success. The first key to success is what you just touched on, which is you have to really, really, really want it. Uh, and that is something I know that might sound like too easy and too simple, but it is so powerful because so many people, when they're starting a business or thinking about doing a business, they don't want it enough. Uh, for example, I was speaking with um, a potential client and, you know, she said, you know, you know, I want to make like a thousand extra dollars a month, but I don't really want to work that hard. And this means that that won't happen even the thousand extra a month because you you have to really 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 want something to make it happen yeah and you've also i mean in that in that example that you just said there you've also just given yourself a get out of jail free card haven't you because you could say well i i do want the thousand but it i have to work too hard to get it therefore it's okay that i don't get it because at the at the outset i didn't want to work that hard to get it that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it it really does. It boils down to what what it is that you really want and being so honest. And I love also that you use the word authentic success and, and authentic freedom, because that's something I passionately believe in. Like, what is your definition of, of, of success? Like, what is it exactly? And, and to make sure you're following your own authentic success. And interestingly, the, the way to find that out is making sure you have time to stop and be and check in with yourself and have the emptiness inside yourself to be able to even know the answer to that question. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's such a, a, an incredibly important point for, for people to take on board. We live in this crazy world of uh, information and stuff coming at us from all angles and we're addicted to our devices. And it's almost counter culture today to take that time out, to be with yourself, to be silent, to block out all of the all of the extraneous things and actually focus on, on really kind of being with yourself and understanding what you want. And I think it's such a powerful thing, but it's so kind, it's it's weird how it's so kind of counterculture today. It is. And I actually believe in order to be successful in business, you actually have to stop doing business. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, and and I, 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 I've lived this, so I can say it's true. I've been taking time off for 30 years in the summer and going to a, a retreat place in the, in the mountains of New Mexico for anywhere between four to eight weeks a year. And this is during the, the, these last eight years, mm -hmm. which is when I have built this multi-million dollar business that I have. And I really do believe that the increase in sales that I have had consistently over these years is because of the time I took off yeah you see and I think that's such a that's such a fantastic and, and powerful powerful point because let's face it I think if a lot of people if they sat down today and just took stock of where they are and really asked themselves what they're doing and why they're doing it a lot of people may discover that they're doing things that they think are expected of them as opposed to doing what they really want to do we don't have so much time 
And I think it's really important to, to remind ourselves of that all the time is like, what are you doing with the time that you've been given this precious gift of, of being alive? What are you doing with it? Yeah. And I think, you know, everybody deserves, you know, you deserve to find what it is you want to do. And then you deserve to find out whether you really want to do it. Because I think those are the two things is find out what you want to do and then find out if you're prepared to actually do the things to achieve it. Yes, absolutely. So true. Yeah. So what was it like for you in the early days when you made this switch and this change um, in the early days? How did that manifest? Well, the first thing I did is I decided I really wanted it. Uh, and then the second thing that I did is I went and looked for help. Uh, um, I have um, I very much believe that you should hire people who are where you want to be and were where you are now. And that is what I did. I, I am in the e-commerce space. I'm in the physical product space. And I went and I hired one of the best. And, she, and to this day, I still work with her. So one of the keys to success absolutely is to make sure you, you know, I call, I call it become a ferocious learner. And that means getting coaches, consultants to guide you. It means reading those books, it means those courses, and always being curious and always being humble. Um, even at the level now of my business, I am I, I still I feel like I have so much, oh my God, I have so much more to learn. And I consistently keep learning. And that is definitely one of the, the keys to, to expand your business and your life. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. And I want to underline that as well, the continuous learning piece, because let's face it, I mean, business is changing dramatically all the time. Um, the way people buy, the way people interact, um, the, the tools out there, all of this, everything is evolving all the time. So if you don't, if you don't continue to learn, um, you, you know, you're going to be left behind. And I think the other part is, it's just not about all the new stuff. There is some enduring wisdom that has been true for a long, long time that it's also good to make sure that you have that foundation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's so it's so important. And, and also the other thing that's really important, especially if you're an entrepreneur, is to make sure that you're not too isolated. Um, and also you are learning from other people and other peers. So I've been involved in a mastermind group, and it's basically three other women. So it's four of us, we all have businesses. And we meet once a month um, on Zoom, of course, mm -hmm. and we really support and, and share and help each other. And that is another way of learning as well. And, and not, just, not just learning and getting the help you need like you would from a consultant or a coach, but having like the connection with other entrepreneurs who, who go through what you're going through. Because let's face it, it is not easy being an entrepreneur. It is not easy having a business. Um, I, I, there was, I think, a quote someone just told me recently that said when something like being poor is hard, building a successful business is hard. Pick your heart. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exa exactly. I think that's a great <laughs> quote. That's an excellent quote. It said anonymous. Um, so unfortunately, yeah. I don't know who said it. Uh, so then when, when things started to, when you started out and, and things started to change, um, what were the first thing, what were the first things that surprised you about your, about your journey of change? Well, first of all, it's really fun making money. <laughs> so I will tell you that, um, it, you know, it, it really, you know, when I first started this, my, my sales at the time uh, were 50,000 a year on, on Amazon. That's what they mm -hmm. were. And, you know, I was kind of proud of that to tell you the truth at that time. Mm -hmm. And my goal, I remember saying to my dad, you know, maybe a year later or something when it had, I had reached over the six figures, you know, I said, I, my goal is to do 250,000. And if I can hit 250,000, that would be like amazing. That's like my, my top number. 
And I guess what has surprised me is how fluid that number becomes <laughs> because yeah. you just, you, you know, you get to the 250 and then you're like, well, I wonder what 400 or 500 is going to feel like. And then you get to that and you're like, hey, you know, you start to realize what I'm trying to say with this, you start to realize this is a numbers game, that if you increase your business by 10% or 20%, then you know that the next year you will be doing that number. And then the year after you will be doing that number. It, it's not rocket science, this actually. And so I guess that is what has surprised me is that there is no upper limit. Yeah, and I think that's a great point is, and I think momentum and success, you know, builds upon itself. So it's when you make that decision to forge forward, suddenly, um, you know, the, the, the clouds part and you see that, oh, but well, there's, there's even greater things I can, I can move on to. But I guess it's all about taking that first step. It really is. Again, it's about wanting it. How much do you really want it? And the reason why I think one should want it is because the, 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 the opportunities of life become so incredibly abundant and beautiful. Like when you step into your own empowerment, when you step into your own independence that you know you can take care of yourself and you don't have to rely on anybody else. Uh, when you can, you know, take your niece or nephews for, to, for a vacation or whatever you want to use your, your income for, this just, um, it lights up your life. I mean, at the beginning, we talked about how I was on an island in Greece and I'm mm -hmm. on the island in Greece with my husband because this is all possible for us now. Um, and I just want to see more and more women entrepreneurs in particular really step into their success so they can live the freedom and the life they want. Yeah, well, great motivation uh, sitting on an island in Greece. I think I, I think that would uh, make most people jealous. So that's great motivation for anybody watching and, and, and listening. What would be your final piece of advice, uh, you know, particularly to women entrepreneurs right now? I mean, it just seems like the world is it just seems like the world is changing so much, but there's great, great opportunities um, emerging now and people want authenticity, they want connection, they want a lot of things that I think a lot of women entrepreneurs probably innately have. Yeah, that is such a great point. Um, I, I, would, I would go back to the clock. Um, and what I mean by that is, is we don't have all the time in the world. And what, wherever you are in your life, whether you're working for a company, whether you started a business, whether you're, whether you're thinking of starting a business, and whether you have one and you're still at a certain level, you have to realize that it is truly in your hands what you are doing with your life. And your success is because of the success you made and your not having success is because of whatever it is you have done as well. And taking that 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 honesty and that 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 belief in oneself that you really can change it and that's what i would really want to say there there's really is not a limit except one's inner limits um, and that was what was one of the main things that changed in my life which is what i spoke about at the beginning which is this mindset that kept me small you know if i made money i wouldn't be able to take longer vacations or whatever this mindset was and it is so imperative now, especially with the world, as you said, we are in such a disruptive place in our world. And it's, it's force, it has to force us to change and it has to force us to live an authentic life and to believe what we can do and achieve. And we can believe and do and achieve so much more than we ever think is even possible. And this is the disruption that's happening in the world that I hope will wake more and more women up to really step in and do it because you can do it. There is help out there. You can do it. Yeah, listen, beautifully put, Leslie. All of Leslie's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. 
Yeah, so I have this business that I built uh, back from Bali. And simply a few years ago, I started to feel, wow, I really want to help other women entrepreneurs be successful too. And that was the motivation to write my book, which will be out in 2022, and also to start to offer uh, counseling, consulting, and online courses too. So you could find me at my website, which is lesliecooster.com. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And the book uh, that's coming out is called Money and Freedom, Seven Master Keys to Seven Figures for Women Entrepreneurs. So I'm sure that'll be a fantastic success and, and well-timed. Listen, thanks again, Leslie, for sharing, uh, for sharing your insights today. Um, thank you all for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon.